the tallest structure in Central Texas. That's the distinction of this tower of steel. But this structure is much more than cold steel. It's music and laughter and tears and parades and sports and a thousand things. This is a magic wand that cast its spell through the air and onto the screen of your television set. This is a transmitter tower of KTBC TV. It is 2,049 feet above mean sea level, located atop Mount Larson, overlooking the city of Austin. And this is a transmitter building that houses the intricate transmitting equipment necessary to carry the TV signal from here to your house. It was inside this building that Channel 7 began operation on Thanksgiving Day, 1952. Our studio consisted of a small corner of the transmitter building from which the announcers announced and the performers performed. It was hectic, it was crowded, and it was fun. It was television come to Austin. Five months later, we had outgrown our small studio on top of Mount Larson, so we packed up KTBC TV and KTBC Radio, which had been located in the Brown Building, and moved the whole shebang to the Driscoll Hotel Building at Six and Brazos in downtown Austin. This was home for seven and a half years. But like Austin, television and radio had been growing. So bursting at the seams, we started thinking about a new home. Finding a location wasn't easy, but finally we did, so we started building our new home. It's finished now, and tonight we'd like to show it to you. I'm Cactus Pryor, and this is home, KTBC Radio and Television at Chenth and Brazos. Come on in, we'll show you around. But first, I'd uh, like to show you this mosaic, of which we're very proud. It was created by Paul Hatgill and Michael Frary, and depicts uh, various Austin architecture. We're very proud of it. I think it's one of the most beautiful mosaics we've ever seen. Let's go inside here. You know, they say the first impression is a lasting one, and that's why we have a couple of very attractive young ladies here to meet you as you come in and to uh, answer the hundreds of telephone calls we receive here every day. First, there's the boss out front here, uh, Jess Glasshoff. And then there's Glenda Rutledge over the switchboard. No, ma'am, we don't know what time the bus is coming in from Fredericksburg. I suggest you call the bus company. Uh, Glenda's a little busy right now. So suppose we're going back and uh, take a look at Radio 59, huh? The studios are right back this way. Inside this room is the busiest man in Austin, Texas. This is the KTBC newsroom, and this is Paul Bolton, news editor of both KTBC radio and television. Life to Paul is a constant series of deadlines. Let's see if we can catch him between a couple of them now. Paul, we'd like you to meet the uh, city of Austin. I believe we've met. <laughs> We're taking a little tour of the uh, facilities, and I wonder if you'd show us how the, the newsroom functions. Well, how much time do I have, Cactus? Oh, you got a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Well, I think we should start with our new sources, and of course, first of all, here we get uh, tips on stories from state police and from uh, city police, and of course, we have constant communication with our mobile unit, Red Rover. Uh, at this time, uh, newsman Jay Hodgson, sitting over here, is uh, taking a report on a fire which occurred just a few moments ago. He's talking with the owner of the establishment which uh, suffered this fire this morning. Then, of course, our second source of uh, news are the right. uh, news wires, the news machines, which are in this closet. There are three of them in there. Newsman Hal Nelson is now looking over the uh, radio uh, wires. We have three wires in there. One uh, is a newspaper news wire. The second is the weather and uh, state police wire. And the third, a uh, radio news wire. Nelson is getting ready a newscast at this time. Over here, Newsman John Foley is uh, working on a story. I'm not sure just what the story is about at the present time. And uh, uh, Joe Lee is getting a camera ready. He's going out <clears throat> to shoot film of the story that uh, John is writing. Uh, Dave Smith uh, is uh, also a photographer. He also does most of the editing on the film. In those little black boxes over there, filed so carefully on the shelf, are several thousand people. Uh, they are all of the uh, leading political figures of uh, uh, Texas and many national and international figures, plus uh, 
uh, many citizens of Texas. In, any, in other words, if any of these people should be uh, involved in any kind of a news story, we would have their pictures ready to show you on the screen. And that in brief, uh, Cactus, just about wraps it up. Well, thank you, Paul, for the who, what, when, where, and why. Is any last word? Yes, you can get out of here because I've got a deadline. <laughs> figures, figures. <laughs> right down here, we'd like to show you a room that never sleeps. This is the radio control room of Radio 59. Every minute of every hour of every day, there's a man inside this room where the men of music babysit for the city of Austin. Let's go inside and see what's happening and right remember, now. remember, the Optimus Clubs are now selling Christmas trees. All proceeds from these we'll sales go to many of Austin's youth Hanlon projects, is doing which are sponsored by the Optimus Club. On the town this time. We'll be talk sure as soon as he finishes up. from out. an Optimus. OK, we can talk now. Hi, Lou. Turn your monitor down a little bit and less confab, huh? Who's your friend? Uh, the city of Austin. Well, hi, Austin. What if you take a little time and show us how KTBC radio functions, Lou? Be real happy to. We're right proud of our new operation here. Shall we start by acknowledging the man that pays the bills? I think we should, yeah. OK. Uh, time was when all of our commercials came to us on transcriptions like these, and it required quite a bit of mechanical work in getting them on the air and getting the music on the air all at the same time. And that has all been replaced by these three little machines here, which play tape cartridges. All of the commercials are now placed on these. We can turn this down just a bit more. I'll show you how quickly and easily we can get a... a fanfare or a commercial or whatever you happen to want. It's all right back here in this rack, all of our commercials. In the rack right next to it, we have that solid sound in Austin Town, the records that we use to provide the, the best listening we like to think in Austin here at Radio 59. Then over here, a couple of tape machines that we use to delay broadcasts. We record broadcasts from the network and then play them back, and also for news features which are phoned in or perhaps from Red Rover, which aren't really topical and can be delayed for a more convenient time. This the baby that runs the whole operation. This is the console or control board, which uh, controls the turntables, the tape machines, the tape cartridge machines, the lines that come in for remotes, and that just about takes Lou, care of it. Don't look now, but your record's about to run Take out. care of it just in time, doesn't it? Pardon yeah. me. And that was Frank Sinatra with Nice and Easy. And speaking of doing things nicely and easily, are you planning some Christmas entertaining? Uh, this is where in? we came in, folks. Let's well, step outside. Uh -huh. And go over to FM control, frequency modulation. Uh, now, these men inside here have the awesome job of connecting all the wires that make FM work. Uh, the tall, black-headed fellow is Harry Blackstone, Jr., who will be in charge of FM sales. He's speaking with Ben Hearn, who is KTBC's chief engineer. Now, the fellow with the Yule Brunner look there is Graydon Holm, Ben's uh, assistant, and the other one is Ed Perkins. I'd, uh, I'd ask them to describe what they're talking about, but uh, they don't speak English, only electronics. Now, right inside here is the recording room where all of the jingles and commercials that you hear on Radio 59 are recorded. Uh, this is Jim Morris, who is uh, KTBC's radio program director. Hi, Jim. Hi, Cactus. How are you? Well, fine. What's in the mail this afternoon? Oh, it's uh, jingle time down here in Radio Land. We have all the mad caroliers assembled in Yon Studio for the purpose of recording some new singing station breaks for use on Radio 59. Uh -huh. Want to sit in? Yeah, how about introducing the group to us? Okay, first of all, uh, the young ladies in the studio, there's Unifay Johnson, then Nikki Pusen, and Ruth Ann Wilson, all assembled from our office staff upstairs. Then there are three Radio 59 men of music in the studio. There's Rod Ford, there's Bob Gooding, and then Jack Wallace. Now, the fellow over here is sort of making like Toscanini is our musical director, Willard Dyer. Wait a minute, I'll turn the mic on. We'll show you what's happening down here. Okay, Willard, yell when you're ready, and I'll feed you the instrumental tape. Let's try it again, and this time, articulate. Stand by. This is Radio 59 singing break number three, take two. There you are. Comments? 
Kind of gets you right here, doesn't it? It does that. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy, for showing us around. You bet. Nice to have now, you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to transport you to the third floor with the magic word, Thermostraka Mortimer. You're looking east on the third floor now, where many of the offices are located, so let's go uh, door peeking. This is the office of Dan Love, TV program director. You home, Dan? Yep, I live here, Cactus. How about showing us around the third floor? I'd be very happy to. Good evening, Austin. If you would step down the hallway with me for a moment to uh, the office on the left. Here our sales service department works. It's a department of people who call on our various clients. They pick up information about commercials, and then they come back here and uh, write the same. This is television, huh? That's right, television sales service. Mm -hmm. Standing inside, uh, Jean Covert, our woman's editor. She's probably discussing a commercial with the head of this department, Grace Fowler. Say, so, Jean, can you think of a good synonym for terrific? Try wow, Grace. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dan. These uh, other offices here occupied by the sales uh, department, continuity and traffic. Mm -hmm. We could save some uh, steps, I believe, if we stop here and take a look down at the office uh, just past you, Cactus. It's occupied by Barbara Robinson, who heads up our radio continuity department. I think I can bring her to us. I'm for that. I'm for that. Okay. Whoever wrote uh, this radio commercial is a sheer genius. See, you work like a charm. <laughs> Barbara Robinson of the Radio Continuity Department. You've heard the expression uh -huh. and now a word from our sponsor, which yeah. she's the word. The latest word. I right. Mean. Hey, I'd like to try that technique myself, if I may, on, on TV traffic. Huh? Be my guest. I don't care what the deadline is. We have to add 10 more commercials to tonight's schedule. <laughs> well, that's a, a rather negative approach, but it was uh, very effective, I see. These uh, TV traffic people, well, uh, identifying them top to bottom, Tommy Collier up top, uh, below him, Joy Stewart, and Tynes Ricketts, and down at the bottom, Vicki Williams. TV traffic. Now, their function is to, well, you could compare them with the traffic cop who routes the traffic in and out of Austin and so forth. They do the same thing for uh, TV and our log, which we work by. They schedule all our commercials. They schedule all our programs. In short, they, uh, well, they kind of chart the television course we sail each day. Looks like my siren call attracted another head here. Did it that. This particular pretty head belongs to Londa Trial, our radio traffic chief. Uh, she does essentially the same thing for radio that the four people over in TV do, Londa Trial. Now, if you'll truck on down to the end of the hall, you'll meet the folks that do the figuring on the figures. Uh, they are our accountants at KTBC. Looks like some high mathematics are going on in here, Dan. Yep, it looks like our outdoor editor, George Bolton, is trying to sell the chief accountant, Art Vicklin, some statistics that Vic just won't buy. <laughs> Seated here, uh, Mildred Jarl, standing, Norma Smithy, uh -huh. and to round out the accounting department, this is Jim Uzell. You know, Dan, this is the most respected department because they make out all the checks. Amen, uh, amen. Well, we sure do thank you for showing us who's on third. It's been my pleasure. Uh, Who's on fourth? Fixing to find out if you'll just say the magic word. Okay. Thermostrock of Mortimer. You see? Just like television. Now let's explore floor four. Right in here is the film processing room where all of the film is processed, and I guess that adds. Uh, the portly gentleman you see right there is Gordon Wilkerson, head of our film department. And that's his chief assistant, Leroy Houston. This is one of two processing machines we have here that develop each day thousands of feet of film, not only for KTBC, but for the University of Texas, the Austin Public Schools, and other school systems throughout Central Texas. So effective is this machine that our news department can shoot film at 6 o'clock. By 6.30, we can have it processed and on the air. Right across the hall here is another production machine. It's called Bruce Lynn. This is the art department, and Bruce is uh, our staff artist. Uh, what are you working on today, Bruce? <laughs> Another of your masterpieces, huh? Bruce does the artwork for the slides and the various signs that you see on television, and he also creates some of the, uh, the sets that you see on KTBC TV. Now let's uh, truck on down the hall, as we say in television, to the room where we screen films and uh, audition shows for our various clients as well as uh, where we also hold some of our conferences. Looks like a conference going on right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, in this case, it's a joint meeting between the members of our radio sales staff and TV sales staff. That's uh, Bob Bobbitt, general sales manager, conducting the meeting. To his right is Charlie Howell, TV sales manager. To his right is Bob Meacham, radio sales manager. Elmo Brown, administrative assistant. Harold Britton, TV sales. Uh, Jake Colvin, TV sales. Earl Deeth, 
radio sales, Evelyn Manzingo, TV sales, Bob Osborne, radio sales, and David Witcher, radio sales. That's Donna Beard taking notes of the meeting. Looks like a pretty high pressure conference going on. Let's uh, listen in and see what's happening. Bob, I just don't think it can be done. But Charles, I think it can be done. I just don't see how in the world it can. Charles, what we've got to do is adopt an attitude of positive thinking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let's leave these high-pressure salesmen to their high-level conference and go on down the hall to, a very another, uh, to another very important department. This is the department uh, that does, uh, you might say, all of the ballyhoo for uh, Radio 59 and for KTBC-TV. This is our promotion manager, Larry Carruthers. And with him is our director of um, public relations and personnel, Warren Woodward. Looks like uh, they're charting a big promotion campaign right now. Promotion, of course, is very important to this business. Inside here is our auditorium, where we hold, among other things, staff meetings. And these uh, two fellows are with our film department. That's uh, Dan Albertson and David Swope setting up a film for a screening for a naval ROTC unit. And this is the, the auditorium. Incidentally, we can also use this room as an alternate studio from time to time. And that's the fourth floor. Let's say the uh, magic word now and transport us down to the coffee shop. Thermos truck and Mortimer. Now we're in the room where the employees enjoy their coffee breaks and lunch periods. I hope you're impressed by the absence of all employees, indicating not only an extremely industrious organization, but one fully cognizant of this program being photographed at this time. Now, Austin, if you'll move back just a little bit, we'd like to show you the room where we meet our guests who are going to appear on the various local television programs. I think I see one in here now. Yes, as a matter of fact, it uh, looks like Mayor Pro Tem Lester Palmer is waiting to uh, go on the air. What show are you going to be on, Lester? Well, this one, Cactus, if you will let me. Well, you're the mayor. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you, sir. KTBC radio and television is, brings many hours of entertainment and information to the people of Austin and to the area that we serve every day. We also especially want to thank you for the attention that you focus on the Austin retail market in Central Texas. So we want to thank you, Cactus, for being such a wonderful, willing, working member of our community. You contribute much to making Austin one of the finest places in the world to live and to work. Thank you, Lester. We're very proud to be a part of the community. Now, I think I hear our call, so if you'll excuse me, I'll utter a small thermos rocker, Mortimer, and we'll be off to the TV studio. This is a field where the game is played. And here's a team waiting for the kickoff. These are the men actually involved with putting one dancer on the air. Let me call the starting lineup. Quarterback. Wally Pryor, TV director. Right half. Carl Stern, audio engineer. Left half. Wilburn Scott, video engineer. Full back. Fred Craddock, projection. Right end. John Buffington, telescope operator. Right tackle. Carl Swanson, cameraman. Right guard. Pete Chibe, cameraman. Center. Gus Stewart, studio manager. Left guard. Bob Lovelady, mic boom operator. Left tackle. Ed Zreet, videotape. Left end. Jay Hodson, booth announcer. Looks like we've chosen the wrong analogy in comparing this team to a football team because we've already been through 11 positions and we have more men left. For example, there's uh, Jerry Green, who is uh, the master of ceremonies. And there's Charles Lassiter, who is the lighting director. And there's Jim Gordon, who is the assistant lighting director. And finally, the dancer herself, Barbara Carson. Now let's watch the team warm up. All right, Bob, bring it in, Dad. Gus is gonna bring the lights down. Yeah. Come over there. Come on. We won't just lie that, Gus. Come on. Down there in the middle, all right? That's good. Whoa! Move that stuff in. All right. Drop the flat in. I'm gonna put you the stars. Hey, Jim. Hey. Bring the flat in, Bob. What are you gonna do with this one here? Well, I'm gonna put it on the back. Make a little talk there. Can I say a few words for the now, four score, right 14 down. years ago, we... Oh, that's good. <coughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Let's uh, leave this tranquil scene and go inside here.
This is the nerve center of the television station. This is a brain that activates the bodies that you see on your set at home. This is a TV control room. This man right here is the video engineer. He shades the picture for contrast and brightness just as you do on your set at home. The man next to him is the director. He calls the shots. On his headset there, he directs the members of the floor crew and by the series of remote control buttons in front of him, he punches up on the air the picture that he wants, be it uh, videotape or film or network or live cameras or slides. The man next to him is the audio engineer who rides herd on the sound that ends up on the speaker of your television set. Through the glass windows in there is a projectionist. He threads up the film on two projection machines, and he also puts the slides in their proper place. In uh, Jan isolation booth is the booth announcer. This is a man who uh, gives you all sorts of interesting information, like uh, the name of the station, uh, the program forthcoming, how to cure a headache, and the time of day, all in 30 seconds time. This is the videotape engineer, and this is, is his baby, Sam. Sam is an electronic masterpiece with an insatiable appetite for cowboys and Indians and politicians. You name it, and Sam has had it. Sam is the greatest pack rat of all times, but one thing about him, once, he's, uh, once he gives it back, it's in as good a shape as when he took it away from you. Sam is an RCA videotape recorder. We're very happy to have him with us. This wide band of tape records not only the sound, but the picture as well. And its reproduction is as good as the original picture and sound. But unlike film, there's no developing or processing required. And you can use it over and over and over again. Incidentally, this program that you're seeing right now is on uh, videotape. Sam has been holding us captive for several days and we're only now escaping. Over here is a, another electronic personality like, that we'd like you to meet. This is Herman, the special effects amplifier. Herman is as uh, versatile as an ambidextrous octopus. You operate him with these controls right here. Wally, would you demonstrate him, please? Let us show you what Herman can do. Well, those are the ingredients. Now let's see if we can put them all together. Ready in the studio. Move Jerry to his left. Truck right just a little. Lower mic two down. Kill that backlight. There we are. Ready in the studio. Coming in. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with genuine pleasure that KTBC-TV presents the former prima ballerina of the New York Civic Opera, Barbara Carson, dancing an excerpt from the Nutcracker Ballet.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present the general manager of KTBC, Mr. J.C. Kellum. I want to reaffirm to you our objective to operate these facilities in the public interest, convenience, or necessity. We shall continue to seek from you information as to what you want and feel the need for in radio and television programming. We shall do our dead level best to meet those wants and needs as you interpret them to us. You at times don't agree with us on the choice of a program. Whenever, in your judgment, we have made the wrong selection, I want you to know that it is not a fault of the heart. We sincerely try to bring you the very best. But to return to my original theme, a facility such as ours depends in the final analysis upon the quality of the people who make up the organization. This program has presented to you a number of the staff who work behind the scenes, whose labors are behind the clear lights, those who turn the switches and punch the buttons, those who write the copy, sell the advertising, and answer the telephone. Every person is as important as every other person in our organization, and we are proud of each of them. But most of all, we are proud of the lady we work with and for, a woman who took a small radio station some 18 years ago and over the years has built it into this community asset. Mrs. Lyndon Johnson personally scrubbed the floors and washed the windows when she took over KDBC, and down through the years she has had two objectives in mind. The first is to bring to Austin the finest radio and television that can be provided, and the second is a deep concern for the continued welfare and well-being of every employee 